In this video, we're going to focus on chemistry problems relating to internal energy, heat, and work. So let's start with this one. Calculate the change in the internal energy of a system if 300 joules of heat energy is absorbed by the system and if 400 joules of work is done on the system. Now, I don't know if you saw a previous video that I created on the first law of thermodynamics, but if you haven't, in chemistry, delta U, the change in internal energy is equal to Q plus W. In physics, it's Q minus W. Now, Q is positive whenever heat is absorbed by the system. So that's during an endothermic process. Q is negative whenever heat is released by the system. So that's during an exothermic process. W is positive whenever work is done on a system. So the internal energy of the system will go up. And W is negative whenever work is done by the system. So this would decrease the internal energy of the system. So those are a few things to keep in mind throughout this video. Now let's get back to this problem. What is the value of Q and what is the value of W? Now notice that the system absorbs 300 joules of heat energy. Because it absorbs energy, Q is positive. Now notice that work is done on a system. When work is done on a system, W is positive. So work is going to be positive 400 joules. Now using that equation, delta U is Q plus W. So we have 300 joules of heat energy absorbed by the system plus 400 joules of work is done on a system. So both of these events work to increase the internal energy of the system. So the change in the internal energy is 700. So if you want to draw a picture, let's say inside the box represents the system and everything outside of that is the surroundings. So the system absorbs 300 joules of energy. So the system gains 300, which means the surroundings loses 300 joules. So this process is endothermic for the system, but exothermic for the surroundings. Now, work is done on a system. 400 joules of work is done on a system. So the system gains 400 joules of energy, but the surroundings loses 400 joules of energy through work. So we could say work is done on a system, but work is done by the surroundings. Let's try this one. The system releases 700 joules of heat energy, and 300 joules of work is done by the system. Calculate the change in the internal energy of the system. So let's start with a picture first. So this is going to be the system. And outside of that, we have the surroundings. So the system releases 700 joules of heat energy. So 700 joules of heat energy transfers out of the system. So this is going to be negative 700 for the system because it lost that energy. But the surroundings gain 700 joules of heat energy. Now, 300 joules of work is done by the system. If the system is doing work, it's expending energy to do that. So the system is going to lose another 300 joules of energy, but the surroundings will gain that 300 joules of energy. So the surroundings gain a total of 1,000 joules, but the system loses a total of 1,000 joules. And so we have the first law of thermodynamics. Energy is neither created or destroyed. It's simply transferred from one place to another. So delta U, I forgot the U, which is Q plus W, 
it's going to be negative 700 plus negative 300. So the change in the internal energy of the system is negative 1,000. So if the system loses 1,000 joules of energy, the surroundings gain 1,000 joules of energy. But this is the answer to the problem. Number three, what is the change in the internal energy of the system if the surroundings gain 250 joules of heat energy and if 470 joules of work is performed by the surroundings? So you need to visualize the transfer of energy. So if the surroundings gain 250 joules of energy, is that heat energy flowing into the system or into the surroundings? That energy is flowing into the surroundings. If it flows, if the surroundings gain that energy. So therefore, we could say Q with respect to the system is negative 250 joules because heat energy is coming out of the system going into the surroundings. Now, 470 joules of work is performed by the surroundings. Whenever something performs work, it loses energy to do so. For example, if you perform the work required to lift weights, you have to burn energy to do it. So if the system is doing work, the system is losing energy. So energy is transferring. I mean, if the surroundings is doing work, the surroundings loses energy which means energy is transferred from the surroundings to the system. So we got 470 joules of work leaving the surroundings going to the system. So W is positive 470. So delta U, which is Q plus W, it's negative 250 plus 470. So that's 220. So I'm going to clarify. If work is performed by the surroundings. The surroundings is losing energy due to work and that energy is going into the system which means work is being done on a system if it's done by the surroundings. And anytime work is done on a system W is positive. Number four, what is the change in the internal energy of the system if the surroundings releases 300 joules of heat energy and if the system does 550 joules of work on the surroundings. So go ahead and try this problem. Now, if the surroundings releases 300 joules of heat energy, what does that mean? Well, that means the surroundings is losing energy, so the system is gaining that energy. So if the system absorbs 300 joules of heat energy, Q is positive 300. Now the system does 550 joules of work on the surroundings. So work is being done by the system, but on the surroundings. Anytime work is done by the system, work is negative. Energy is flowing out of the system to the surroundings. So whenever work is done by something, energy is being consumed. So if work is done by the system, the system loses energy as it's doing work. It's expending energy. And if work is done on the surroundings, the surroundings is gaining energy. So make sure you understand what these expressions mean. So now let's calculate the change in the internal energy of the system. So it's Q plus W. So the system gains 300 joules. As you can see, that's flowing into the system, but it's losing 550 joules. You can see that's flowing out of the system. So then that result is that the system is losing 250 joules of energy. So delta U is negative. We got a net energy flow out of the system. Number five, how much work is performed by a gas as it expands from 25 liters to 40 liters against a constant external pressure of 2.5 atm. So what equation should we use for a problem like this? Well, let's draw a picture. So this time the system 
is a gas. So let's say this cylinder is filled with gas particles. So that's the system. And outside we have the surroundings. Now the surroundings exerts a force on this gas. Anytime you have a pressure, there's a force. Pressure is force divided by area. So there's a constant external pressure of 2.5 atm. And that pressure exerts a force on the gas. As a result, the gas is going to compress. And this problem is going to expand, but we'll talk about that later. Right now, I'm just deriving the formula. So as we apply a force on a gas, the gas will compress. So the volume is being reduced. And notice the change in the height of the cylinder. That's delta H. Now to calculate the work done by a gas, or on a gas, in this case it's on a gas, it's force times the displacement, which in this case the displacement in the y direction is the change in height. And based on this equation, if you rearrange it, if you multiply both sides by A, force is pressure times area. Now the volume of a cylinder is the area times the change or times the height. So area times height is the volume of the cylinder. The area is the area of this circle, which is pi r squared. So this is the volume of a cylinder, it's pi r squared times height. So if the volume is area times height, then area times the change in height must be the change in volume. Now we need to add a negative sign to make this work due to the sign conventions. Now, during compression, as was the case relating to the picture that we have, the change in volume is negative. The volume is decreasing. And a force was being applied on the gas in order to compress it. So the surroundings was doing work on the gas. And whenever work is done on the gas or on the system, W is positive. During expansion, whenever a gas expands, the volume increases. And the gas is doing work on the surroundings as it expands. And so work is going to be negative. So during compression, let me see if I could draw this picture here. You're applying a force to compress a gas. So you're doing work on the gas, which means you're increasing the internal energy of the gas. Whenever the volume decreases, the pressure increases based on Boyle's law. So as you apply a force to compress a gas, what you're really doing is you're expending energy and that energy that you're expending, it's being stored in the form of pressure. So whenever you compress a gas, you're transferring energy to that gas. You're increasing its pressure. And whenever that gas decides to expand, it's going to apply an upward force. And as it applies an upward force, it can do work on the surroundings. So as the volume expands, the pressure reduces. So in order to store energy in a gas, you need to compress the gas. And to release that energy, the gas has to expand. And keep in mind, the energy is stored in a form of pressure, which is a type of potential energy. So gases that have a high pressure has a lot of stored energy. Gases at low pressure doesn't have much stored energy. So keep that in mind. So if you're doing work on the gas, you got to apply a force. So energy is being transferred from you to the gas. Now, as the gas expands against the surroundings, energy is flowing from the gas to the surroundings. So during compression, 
W is positive. Work is done on the gas. During expansion, W is negative. Work is done by the gas. And so the internal energy decreases during expansion, but it increases during express, uh, compression. Now notice that delta V and W always have opposite signs. So based on that, W is negative P delta V. So when delta V is negative, you're going to have two negative signs, which means W has to be positive, as in the case of this problem. Or during expansion, when delta V is positive, W has to be negative because a negative times a positive number equals a negative number. And so because these two signs are opposite, that's why we have the negative sign in front of the equation. So just make sure you understand that. Now let's focus on the problem at hand. How much work is performed by a gas as it expands from 25 liters to 40 liters against a constant external pressure of 2.5 atm. So we said the equation is negative P delta V. The change in volume is the final volume minus the initial volume. Now this pressure is not the internal pressure of the gas because that gradually changes from 4 atm to 2.5 atm. P represents the constant external pressure that the gas has to work against, which was the 2.5 atm. The final volume is 40. The initial volume is 25. So during expansion, delta V is positive. And we said W has to be negative whenever a gas expands. So 40 minus 15, I mean 40 minus 25 is 15. And 2.5 times 15, that's 37.5. So the work is negative 37.5 liters times ATM because the volume was in liters and the pressure was in ATM. So anytime a gas expands, the work done by the gas is negative. Now you need to be able to convert this answer to joules. And here's the conversion that you need. One liter times 1 ATM is equal to 101.3 joules. So W is 3,799 joules if you round it to the nearest whole number. And don't forget this is negative. Number six, how much work is required to compress a gas from 50 liters to 35 liters at a constant pressure of 8 atm. So during compression is the work going to be positive or is it going to be negative? To compress a gas, the work done on a gas is positive. The internal energy of the gas will increase. So let's go ahead and use this formula. It's negative P delta V. So the pressure is constant. It's 8 atm. And delta V is the final volume, which is 35 liters, minus the initial volume of 50 liters. So what we have is negative 8 atm multiplied by a change in volume of negative 15 liters. So therefore, the work required is positive 120 liters times atm. So now let's convert this to joules. So recall that 1 liter times 1 atm is equal to 101.3 joules. So these units cancel. So it's 120 times 101.3 and you should get 12,156 joules. So that's the work required to compress a gas from 50 liters to 35 liters at a constant pressure of 8 atm. Number seven, 500 joules of heat energy was absorbed from the surroundings 
and the gas expanded from 30 liters to 70 liters against the constant pressure of 2.8 atm. Calculate the internal energy change in joules. So let's start with this equation. W is negative P delta V. The change in volume is equal to the final volume minus the initial volume. Now the pressure is 2.8 atm. And the volume, the final volume is 70 liters minus the initial volume of 30 liters. So 70 minus 30 is 40. So we have negative 2.8 atm multiplied by positive 40 liters. So the change in volume is positive due to the expansion of the gas, which means work has to be negative. So negative 2.8 times 40 is negative 112, with the units being liters times ATM. In the last problem, W was 120, and that was liters times ATM. I didn't convert it to joules, but you know how to convert it to joules. In this problem, we need to, because we want the final answer to be in joules. So I'm going to multiply this answer by 101.3 joules per liter per ATM so that these units will cancel. So it's negative 112 times 101.3. So the work due to the expansion of this gas is negative 11,345.6 joules. So now, we need to calculate delta U. What is Q? Is Q positive 500 or negative 500? So notice that heat energy was absorbed from the surroundings. If it's absorbed from the surroundings, that means heat flows from the surroundings to the system. So heat energy is absorbed by the system. So Q is positive 500 the system gains 500 joules from the surroundings. The system being the gas, by the way. So now delta U is Q plus W. So that's 500 plus negative 11,345.6. So the change in the internal energy of the system is negative 10,000 845.6 joules. So this is the answer.